Welcome back to Kidding Around. My name is Melanie Smith and I think it is fabulous that you are here with me today on another fun film Friday. Today we will be talking about the movie Anastasia. Before we do that though, if you like what you're seeing here and want to follow along with all of Kidding Around's videos, please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, make sure to click the like button right below these videos, and also if you really like what you're doing here, please share us with your friends. Thank you very much. Okay, so moving on to Anastasia. Have you seen this movie? I have to say it is one of my all-time favorites. So if you haven't seen it, the basic plot synopsis is that the daughter of the last Russian Tsar, who's Anastasia, is found by two Russian con men. And they are trying to seek the reward that Anastasia's grandmother promised to the ones who found her. But there's an evil twist because the evil mystic of the Tsar family, Rasputin, still wants the Romanov family, that's Anastasia's family, destroyed. So what do you think will happen? I guess you'll have to watch it and find out. Well, in addition to watching it, I thought that we would also travel to where Anastasia lives, to Russia. And while we are in Russia, I thought that we would go and visit St. Basil's Cathedral. You can see it here. Isn't it such an interesting building? I know when I see pictures of this, I have always thought that it looks like a real life gingerbread castle. This building is one of Russia's most popular cultural symbols. It was built from 1555 to 1561 on orders from Ivan the Terrible. What a name, huh? The building has 10 domes, and this is a design that you will see no other place in Russia. There's a quote in the book, Russian Architecture and the West, that describes the building with, quote, a strangeness that astonishes by its unexpectedness, complexity, and dazzling interleaving of the manifold details of its design. So clearly, this building is a one in a million type building. In addition to its unique architecture, I'm sure that you also noticed the colors on the building as well. Those colors were applied on the building in several stages from the 1680s to 1848. The original color scheme was much more traditional, but the Russian attitude towards color changed in the 17th century in favor of these bright colors. I think it is the combination of the colors and the unique architecture that make this building so special. This building that Anastasia would see if she were in Moscow, Russia, is so special that I thought that we would try to recreate it, or at least a portion of it. You can see here that I have made three of the domes of St. Basil's Cathedral, and that's what we will be doing together here today. But if you really like this activity, there is nothing stopping you from recreating the entire St. Basil's Cathedral with all ten domes. But let's go ahead and get started on our first three, and to do that you will need a few supplies. You will need some toilet paper or paper towel tubes. Two should be about the same length or height, they will be height, and one should be a little bit longer or taller. Hi everyone, it's me here from the future to let you know that I just made a little mistake. I'm also here to let you know it doesn't matter too much, but I want you to know so that it all makes sense at the end of our video, and also so you can decide how you want to do your final project. So I told you that you needed two paper towel or toilet paper tubes that were the same length and one that was a little bit taller. Really what I should have said was you need two paper towel tubes or toilet paper tubes that are the same length and one that's a little shorter. The reason that I should have said these lengths is because I based this model off of an actual picture that I saw of St. Basil's Cathedral. This one is just as fun, but it's a little bit less accurate. So it's up to you whichever one you choose. I will say that as long as you vary the height somewhat, so you have short and tall or you have taller and shorter here, it will make for a more pleasing end result. So as long as you vary the heights, you are good to go. You decide if you do two short and one long or two long and one short. It's your call. If you don't have toilet paper or paper towel tubes handy, you might check and see if you have some wrapping paper. Quite often in the center of wrapping paper is a long tube that you could cut down to these heights that you need. 
All right, you will also need a pair of scissors, a hole punch, a pencil, a ruler. You might not need the ruler. We'll talk about this as we go on. Uh, you'll need some masking tape. You'll need some of these fasteners. We used to call these brads. I don't know if they're still called that, but those are fun to use. Uh, you will also need a few beads. These will be the tops of the spires on your domes. You will need a glue stick. You will need a couple pipe cleaners. Uh, you will need a piece of cardboard that will be the base for all of your dome buildings. And then you will need some construction paper. You will first need some brown construction paper. We'll use that to cover our tubes. And then you will also need some construction paper to make the domes. So I'm going to be making a blue and white dome. So I have blue and white construction paper. And then I'm going to be making a red and green dome. So I have red and green. And I will be making yellow and green as well. So I have yellow and green construction paper too. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing that we are going to do is make our domes. So I have, I am going to make this yellow and green one first. And so I have some yellow and green construction paper. It doesn't take very much paper to make these domes. So I am using some paper that you can tell I've already used for another activity. And I am going to put my yellow and green together on top of each other. I'm going to make sure that they overlap completely. And then I am going to be cutting two strips, about one inch wide. I'm just going to cut along there and I am going to cut along there. Now this is where the ruler comes in. If you are interested in using the ruler and making sure that you have a perfectly straight line, you can absolutely do that. Um, you can measure over, you can measure one inch in on your paper, and then you can go up here and you can measure one inch in and then you can draw a line. You can connect those two dots and you can draw your line along your ruler and there you have your inch wide strip. Or you can just freehand it and just draw a line as straight as you can down just like that and you can cut along that line or you can completely freehand it, which is what I will be doing for our other two, and you can just cut strips. The only thing to think about as you're cutting those strips is you want this width to be the same as this width. So as you're cutting, just make sure that your scissors are the same distance from the edge of the paper down here as they are up here. It takes a little bit of practice to cut a straight line, so if you want to draw your lines first, go ahead and do that and it doesn't matter how you want to draw them. It's just up to you as how exact you want to be. I will tell you that you do not need to be very exact for this craft. You just want to get close. So, all right, we have our two now different colors, two strips. So we have a total of four strips, and then I am going to put them together here so that they alternate. So I have green, yellow, green, yellow, and I am going to put those together and uh, shore them up so that they are all about, you know, this, the ends are at the same places. And then I am going to fold them in half. I'm just going to put the two ends together. And so now I have folded them in half and now I'm going to fold on this cut, cut on this fold. <laughs> Let's try that again. All right, and so now I have eight strips of paper. I have four yellows and four greens and they are all alternating. All right, so now I am going to put those all together and I am going to uh, put a hole in each end. So I'm going to put a hole with my hole punch here and a hole with my hole punch here. Now, that's a lot of paper to go through in one punch. You might be able to do it. Um, you can try it definitely. If you can't go through all four or all eight at once, um, go through four at a time or maybe two at a time. That's okay. The only thing is that you want to try to get it in relatively the same spot in all of your strips. But if you are just, you know, if you're closely looking at that and keeping track of it, I guarantee it will be close enough. You don't need to worry about a template or making sure it's in the exact same spot. All right. So, once you have your two holes punched, you are going to take one of these fasteners and you are going to put it through the hole 
and then you are going to turn over the paper and these fasteners split in half so you're going to put one half on one side and one half on the other side. Alright, so this is what you should have. Then you're going to take another one of those fasteners and you are going to put it through the second hole, the second set of holes, and then before you fasten it on the back, go ahead and take one of your pipe cleaners and cut, I don't know, what is that, about four inches off, and we're going to use the small end right now. And then what you are going to do is on the flat side of your fastener, just gently wrap your pipe cleaner around the head of that fastener, just like that. And then, whoops, you can take that fastener and then you can put the, um, you know, actually fasten it on the other side by splitting those legs. All right, so this is what you should have. We're going to leave this pipe cleaner just kind of alone right now. We don't need to worry about it too much. And now we are going to try to make our dome. So what we are going to do is just kind of make a C. We're going to try to make this strip kind of into a C. I'm going to just start pulling out these individual pieces of paper, and then they are going to make my dome. Let's see, I feel like I have two pieces of paper there, but maybe not. So this is very forgiving. You pull out one or two pieces at a time and just continue separating it. And I see now I do have two pieces of paper there, so I will just work to separate those. It can be a little bit tricky to separate to separate these sometimes, as you can see, but that's okay, just keep working at it. You'll get it. I can see it, I can see it, there we go. All right, I have that separated, and then I have my last piece of paper to separate there. All right, and there we go, we have the top of our dome. Now we are going to take this pipe cleaner, and we're going to stand it up at the top, and then I'm going to put a little bead right there, because I think that that kind of makes the fun, it looks like the, it's not a bead at the top of the real spire, but it looks kind of like a bead in pictures. So I am going to just put that uh, pipe cleaner bead right there, and there we go. We have the top of our, um, of our first dome. All right, so let's go ahead and make the other two domes now. So I'll put my yellow and green aside, and then I want to make red and green. So I am going to do the same thing that I did with the yellow and green. I'm going to cut my two one inch about strips. And you can see I am just eyeballing this. There's nothing exact about it. I'm just trying to get them about the same size. All right, then I can put this red and green away. And then I am going to put them all together, fold this, and then I am going to cut on the fold, not fold on the cut, right? Okay, and then I am going to hold these all together and I am going to punch a hole. Ah, that takes some really strong hands. <laughs> all right, and then I am going to do that same thing on the other side. Oh, you know what, yeah, we'll go with it. Ah, oh my goodness. My hands are getting strong. All right, and then I will take my fastener and put it through and then open its legs on one side and then I will put this fastener through and then I am going to cut my uh, spire from my pipe cleaner and I will kind of thread it around the top. My goodness, everything's gotten away from me. <laughs> All right, so then I will thread it around the top of this brad, this fastener, and then I will split that open as well. All right, and then I do the same thing. I kind of make it into a C, or I kind of split them apart, and then I will pull some of these around, and then I will separate them all as much as possible, just like that. And that is how you make your second dome. Well, it's how you make all of your domes, right? All right, let's see if I can get these untangled from each other. Oh, and you know what? Look, I saw, I didn't actually alternate every single color every single time. You can see I have two reds there together. You know what, that's okay. I can just move them around here, and then look, 
they're alternating. So if you miss if you miss it when you're stacking your pa papers together and they're not alternating colors there, that's okay. You can easily fix it as you fan out the domes just like that. All right, so now I'm going to put a bead on the top to make that little ball that we see at the top of the spire. And we have our second one done. All right, so now I'm going to do the third one with blue and white in very much the same way that I did those first two. There we go, we now have our third dome. So then the next thing that we need to do is cover our toilet paper tubes or our paper towel tubes, uh, cover them with our brown construction paper. So the way to do this is to uh, lay down your, your brown construction paper and then put your tube right on top of it. And then I am going to take my pencil and I am going to mark the height of that paper tube. And then I am going to uh, roll this paper right around the tube. And then when I get to that end, when the toilet paper tube is covered with paper, then I am going to make a mark right there. And then I am going to cut this. Now I know that I have two tubes that are the same size, right? So I am going to cut this first uh, piece of construction paper and then I am going to be able to just use that as my template to cut another one. So here is the first one that I will be using, and oh, it actually works very well in that I can just use this as my template to cut my next one. All right, so then to glue, I am going to use quite a bit of glue stick here to make sure that this sticks. So you can see I'm putting a lot of glue on there. And then I am going to put my brown paper right there. And I'm going to hold it just a little bit. And definitely I'm going to rub it to make sure that everything is making contact. And then once I've done that, then I will go along the tube and I will continue to glue. So I'm going to glue most of this uh, tube to the paper. It doesn't have to be completely glued, but it will definitely stick better if there are more sticking points, right? Okay, so then I do the same thing, right? I, I uh, make sure that the, everything has touched and I hold it for a few seconds before I move on. That will just make it stick a lot better. Holding it, making sure everything's touching, and then I will definitely make sure to put quite a bit of glue on this connection point so that uh, the one piece of paper can hold down the other piece of paper. All right, and now I have one tube done, so then I will do the same with my next tube. So now I will do the same thing, the same type of measurement with my larger tube. So I am going to lay it out on my piece of paper and then make a mark at the top. And then I will roll the construction paper along the tube. And once it's covered, I will make another mark. And then I will just cut straight lines along those marks. And I will have the right sized paper to cover my tube. On the brown, sometimes it's kind of hard to see your pencil, so you can also make a bigger mark to make sure that it's easy to see. And then I glue it the very same way. On this one you might have noticed that I actually put the tube down on the table to use the table for help 
in making sure that the glue is um, touching every piece of this tube and every piece of this paper. If it's easier to do that for the shorter ones, go ahead and do that too. Use everything that you can to make it easier. So now we have our three covered paper towel or toilet paper tubes, and we also have our three domes, and we are going to put them together. So to do that, it's very simple. You just take four or five inches of masking tape, and then you put one side of that piece of masking tape in down on the inside the uh, toilet paper tube, and then you take the other end of the masking tape and you put it on the other side of the toilet paper tube, and then you take your dome and you stick it right on top of the masking tape, and then you can just put your finger in between two of those strips of paper to make sure that there's good contact between the paper and the tape. And there you go, you have your completed dome. Now we do it again. And I will tell you, I was just noticing that I had a plan. I was going to recreate this set of domes here. And now I see though that my one odd toilet paper tube on this side was smaller and my one odd toilet paper paper towel tube on this one is bigger. So I can't recreate it exactly, but that's okay. I am just going to roll with it because guess what? These are just used for inspiration. It doesn't have to be exactly the same and I still think it's going to be very fun when I am done. So you know what? You have to sometimes make modifications to your plan and that's just totally fine. So again, I am just putting one side of the tape on one side of the tube and one and the other side of the tape on the other side of the tube and then I am sticking my dome on top and is it exactly like this one? No, it's not, but that's totally okay. All right, so now we have everything stuck. So now we just need to make our completed buildings stick to the base. So we're going to do it very in a very similar way. I am going to take some tape and I will tape on one side of the tube and then I will tape on the other side of the tube. And I am going to make sure that I am leaving a little bit of tape sticking out so it's not completely flat across that tube because that will make it easier to stick on the um, on the cardboard so then i just push it down like that and it sticks and there we have our completed building on our, on our base and then i am going to do the same with these others so i am making sure that there's a little bit of tape sticking out so it's not completely level with the uh, with the tube. I did that on the top too. It just makes things a little bit easier to stick. And then I just stick it down and there we go. And I will do the final one right here. So let's see, I'm running out of room here. All right, there we go. I'm going to put that tape inside. I'll put the other piece or the other side on the other side. Again, leaving a little bit sticking out. And then I will complete my piece of St. Basil's Cathedral. There you go. I would love to see pictures of your pieces of St. Basil's Cathedral. Please ask a grown-up to take a picture and put that on our Facebook site. Well, thank you so much for joining me today in talking about Anastasia and St. Basil's Cathedral. I hope that you have fun watching the movie after you have made your model of the cathedral that Anastasia would see if she were in Moscow, Russia. I look forward to seeing you at our next Kidding Around lesson. I can't wait to see you then. But until then, thanks so much for joining me. Thanks for kidding around with me. I will see you next time.